When President Joe Biden stopped construction on the Keystone Pipeline, the ripple effects were felt almost instantly. CNN's Martin Savage went to South Dakota to examine the aftermath. I'm going to sign you and that's what we do while you're all here. When President Biden revoked the construction permit of the Keystone XL Pipeline, environmentalists celebrated. 1,500 miles from Washington, in Murdo, South Dakota, population 444, Jeff Birkeland had a different reaction. How did you feel? Like it got kicked in the stomach, honestly. I didn't, I didn't feel good at all. He's the CEO of a tiny electric cooperative with a big opportunity, building two substations providing power to two of the pipeline's pumping stations. And each one of those would generate how much financially for you? Roughly half a million dollars a month. This for a company that has only seen 99 new customers in 30 years. The profits would have all gone back to the co-op's 3,700 members. Roughly our members on average would have received about a $325 credit annually. That, that would be theirs. Additionally, he says tens of thousands of tax dollars would have trickled down to the local school district and its 190 students. But all that vanished with the stroke of a presidential pen. In Phillip, South Dakota, population 779, Trisha Burns and her husband had just invested their own money expanding Ignite, a fitness center, hoping to make a little extra from the pipeline workers coming to town. So, you know, the old saying, you got to make hay when the sun shines, and we felt like the sun was going to be shining, and we needed to take advantage of that. She watched Biden's inauguration on television. And then the executive order started coming in, and... Um, when he signed the bill to pull the permit, it was a tough, tough moment here at Ignite. By midnight, she says, 45 members had called to cancel memberships. In a big city, that doesn't matter. Here, that's over half of our memberships. Here, that's $3,000 in reoccurring monthly income. That matters. The town of Phillip also saw benefits. TC Energy, the pipeline's owner, contributed money towards a new fire truck, new sidewalks, even local sports. Construction crews spent money at local stores. Biden's opposition to the project wasn't a surprise. How fast everything stopped was. Everything had been signed, sealed, delivered, and that was all taken away in an instant. TC Energy estimates nearly a thousand employees had been laid off. There's all this money invested into this and all these jobs that people are basically promised. And then the president can just sign an executive order and shut it all down, you know? No one we talk to seems to know what comes next. TC Energy hasn't replied to our request for comment, but has said it was disappointed by President Biden's decision. Environmentalists had argued the pipeline and the oil would have added to climate change and feared damage to water and wildlife where the pipeline went through. But stopping the pipeline has problems of its own, like what happens to the land that was already bought. Another concern, what do you do with all the stuff? Pipeline assets are spread across hundreds of miles, much of it now just stranded. Pumping stations, construction camps, and piles of pipe sit vacant and marooned. Many here saw the pipeline as a chance to do better. Now its remnants litter the landscape, haunting reminders of what might have been.